Um, but that's just an arbitrary limitation. If we keep the pattern the same, the pattern evolves slowly and gradually. It evolves, but it has continuity. Uh, we ultimately can escape this sort of constraint of having a biological brain in a, in a physical skull that's this big. That's a big constraint. Uh, most of our thinking takes place in the cortex. The cortex is a flat sheet that's about this big. Uh, that's actually why humans are superior, because a monkey's is about this big and a mouse is about the size of a postage stamp. So we have a bigger one, but it's still only this big. Why, why not build a cortex that's far bigger uh, in terms of computational capacity and be able to think grander thoughts? We ultimately will be able to do that. But you think that we are not going to miss our physical bodies because we are going to be able to create different bodies, and uh, especially virtual bodies, right? We're going to be spending more of our time in virtual reality. This virtual reality today, you can see it as a harbinger of things to come. Take Second Life. People do everything in, uh, that they do in real life in Second Life. They, have, they go to concerts, they have romances, they invest in the stock market. Uh, they do sex, all, uh, There's lots of sex in, in Second Life. Uh, so today it's cartoon-like, it's not fully realistic, although it's getting more realistic. If you look at it today versus a year ago, you can see it's, it's getting more and more realistic. Go out 10, 20 years, it won't be a picture over here. It'll be full immersion, we'll be in this virtual reality environment. All the Our, senses. We'll have all the senses, because the it'll be taking place inside your nervous system. The avatars won't be a little picture. You, you'll feel like you are that avatar, but it doesn't have to be the same as your body in real reality. You can have a different body in different situations, just like in Second Life. You can have a different avatar for different situations. Uh, and uh, we'll be spending a lot of our time there. And some of the people you meet will have uh, will be representations of biological people or cyborgs. Some will be just AIs. That's true already today. The, the people you meet on Second Life, most of them have biological people controlling them, but some are actually not. Some are just bots that are just software programs. And there's a game going on. How long can you have a bot fool people that it's really not a, not a human? Uh, it's another variation of the Turing test. And some can go for you know, 10, 15 minutes without people discovering that they're, they're human. And they're getting more and more sophisticated. But if we get out to 2029, I believe uh, computer intelligence will be at the level of human intelligence. That has been my claim all along. Computers will be powerful enough and we will have succeeded in reverse engineering, understanding the human brain and recreating it. There's already 20 regions of the brain that we have modeled and simulated in software and tested those simulations, like the auditory cortex, the visual cortex, the cerebellum, where we do our skill formation, like catching a fly ball, uh, like slices. Obama, Obama killing a fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's most of that uh, takes place in the cerebellum. Uh, most of its policy, policy decisions take place in the cortex. There have been slices of the cortex simulated. So, and th and that progress is exponential. Uh, so, I, I make the case that we will reverse engineer and understand the methods, model, and simulate all the regions of the brain by 2029 and that'll provide us the software for human level intelligence. No próximo programa, Kurzweil explica o que é a singularidade, que ele prevê para 2045 e como será o sexo num futuro mais virtual do que real, onde o homem terá cada vez menos partes humanas. Se você quiser saber mais sobre os bastidores desta entrevista, entre no blog do Milênio, no site da Globo News.